Why do J-1 waivers get denied? In this video, we're gonna talk about some of the common reasons that J-1 waivers get denied and what you can do about it, what you can do to avoid a denial. Stay tuned to learn these tips. Hi, my name is Koshik Ranchad. I'm an immigration attorney that's been practicing for over 20 years and I'm excited to dive into today's topic. Let's look at the top reasons why J-1 waivers get denied. Reason number one, the reasons provided don't outweigh the considerations of the J-1 program. When you're coming on the J-1 visa, the idea, the concept is to take your skills back to your home country. So that's why you need the waiver because they want to see the reasons that you're presenting in the waiver counterbalance the intent of the J-1 program. Reason number two, failure to meet the eligibility requirement. One of the most basic eligibility requirements is that you have to have the appropriate qualifying relatives. So you have to have a US citizen spouse or US citizen child or lawful permanent resident spouse or lawful permanent resident child. I did have a consultation with a very smart guy. He had a PhD, but he filed the J-1 waiver based off of his parent. That's not a qualifying relative and therefore the case was denied. So make sure you get this basic concept correct so you don't waste your time applying for the J-1 waiver if you're not even eligible. Now those eligibility requirements that I was discussing are specific to the hardship waiver. There are different types of J-1 waiver. You want to make sure that you meet the eligibility requirements for each one of these waivers. For instance, the no objection waiver, you need to have a no objection statement from your home country. There is interested government agency waivers. Those have their own specific requirements. Persecution waiver, where you would need to show persecution if you went back to your home country. There's the Conrad 30 waiver, where every state is able to allow and provide 30 spots to physicians to be able to work in an underserved area. So as you see, every one of these waivers has very specific requirements and you wanna make sure you meet each one of these very specific requirements. Reason number three, inadequate documentation. You cannot just make assertions in your J-1 waiver application. You want to, as much as possible, document your case and back up your assertions with documentation. This makes your application much more credible. For instance, for a hardship waiver application, this could include letters from medical professionals, reports issued by the Department of State, copies of tax returns and pay statements, letters from relatives, and other documentation that provides a compelling case allowing you to stay in the United States for the sake of your family. Insufficient evidence of the hardship or lack of supporting evidence from relevant authorities or professionals could lead to a denial. Fourth, incorrect filing procedures. J-1 waiver applicants must be filed with their appropriate government agencies and follow specific procedures. Mistakes or omissions in the application process often result in denial. One of the biggest mistakes that I see with exceptional hardship waivers is the application only being submitted to USCIS and not to the Department of State. Five, security and admissibility concerns. If you have a history of criminal activity or security concerns, your application might be denied. Now, what do you do if your J-1 waiver application gets denied. One thing that you could do is if circumstances have changed in your case, if it's an exceptional hardship waiver, you could refile. You could also look at other waiver options. However, the first thing to do is understand the reason for denial and that will allow you to decide where to go from there. You'll want to carefully review the denial notice and look at what the reasons for the denial were. I would recommend in this situation you consult with an immigration lawyer that focuses on J-1 waivers. They'll be able to help and analyze the denial for you as well and provide you with options and how you want to move forward. If the denial was due to insufficient documentation or errors, make sure to address these deficiencies thoroughly if you appeal or in your new application. You want to make sure that you're also following timelines involved with your application and stay on track with them to avoid further complications. So if you have the ability to appeal, there is a timeline on when you need to respond and you want to make sure that you respond within that timeline. Also, if you receive a request for evidence, very important that you respond to that request for evidence on time. Otherwise, your case will get denied and we don't want that to happen. While a denial can be discouraging, it may not be the end to your dreams of continuing to live and work in the United States. There may be other options for you. You might be able to change, for instance, to an F-1 visa or an O-1 visa. By understanding the common reasons for the denials, seeking the guidance of an immigration lawyer and taking strategic actions in response to the denial, you'll be able to navigate the challenges of the J-1 waiver process. I wanna thank you for taking the time to watch this video by bettering yourself, by bettering your family, by bettering your family, you're bettering the world. Thank you. Bye for now.